Thank you all again for coming to Women at Work this evening. Um, it is the first, or sorry, the third event out of four of Chamber Month activities. So thank you to those of you who are also at the Rotary Free Enterprise Luncheon on April 4th and the Chamber's annual banquet last Thursday. And now you're here. And then on Monday, we will be celebrating our volunteers with the Volunteer Recognition Luncheon. If your organization has yet to recognize a volunteer, <clears throat> Drake, well, uh, and you would like to, there's still a tiny bit of time. And Stewart's Premier Catering will be making a fabulous Thanksgiving dinner for lunch for us as we. Oh, okay. We will have a, a lovely turkey dinner. And I want to thank Ron and Donna for dinner this evening. Great job as always. So thank you. <laughs> Some of us have learned an appreciation for pineapple Love sauce. It. Love it. Pineapple sauce. Exactly. It's always good to walk away having learned a new food that you love. I also want to thank Melissa Mann and Sherry Hamilton from Drakewell. Uh, we, they are the ones that operate Drakewell and have made this our spot for this evening. So we appreciate that very much in your hospitality. So we uh, used to always try and focus on women owned and operated businesses. And this is a good example of women running a very big <laughs> operation here. And we appreciate all the work you do and all of your partnerships with the community. Uh, I also wanna thank everyone who is an exhibitor tonight. And if you, again, haven't gotten out there and checked out those things, please do so, because they're gonna wrap them up soon this evening. Um, I wanna also do door prizes while we introduce people. So we will start with Southwoods Assisted Living. They have their own door prize that they're going to draw and, and make long speeches. <laughs> no, no speeches. I promised, I promised, no speeches. No one has to talk. No one has to talk, but please draw your door prize. <laughs> and the winner is Margaret Carter. Yay, you don't even have to get up. <laughs> And in an interesting twist, Margaret Carter, our Avon representative, has her own door prize to draw. Fingers crossed, Southwoods ladies. <laughs> if it is a Southwoods person, we'll question this. It'll be suspicious, and it'll throw the whole door prize system off. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, so clearly that table, <laughs> something fishy is happening back there at that table. So we'll move on to this basket and do a drawing for Christy Ebert's door prize from Biomes Insurance. Actually, here, why don't you guys go there? Okay, Kelly Davis. So Kelly gets Christmas prize. <laughs> and then I have a prize, the handbag bingo. I have a ticket thanks to Terry Wig of the United Way and Ashley English. So this is a good one. Oh, yeah, Since you know everybody. <laughs> and that goes to Kayla Alper from the Water. Oh, you should be going anyway, but have a little fun. Or you can bring a friend. Okay. And then our next door prize will be from Chana Hopkins from Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Can I draw my own? Sure. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Last but not least, Leah Carter from Titusville Renaissance Open Air Market. Mm. Don't pull your card. I will not. Good. <laughs> Cheryl Scott from Big Brothers and Big Sisters. 
from the YWCA. <laughs> I like all the, like, I don't know, the jokes. It's just nice. It's kind of nice to have an all-ladies dinner. So thank you again all for coming out tonight. And we're getting ready to turn it over to another one of the new elements of our Women at Work event. If you've been with us in the past, we've met at lunchtime. We've had the exhibits, and everyone has gotten up to talk. And as you may have noticed, people don't really love getting up to talk about even their own organization. So this year we're trying something different, letting you all off the hook so you can just sit back and enjoy. But Emily Fetko is with us tonight to again present Creating Influence and Shifting Your Power. Some of you may remember Emily as Emily Gill from her Oil City days a while back. That's how I first met you when I first started traveling the oil region chamber circuit. And so now we are very happy to have you with us tonight and we'll turn the microphone over to you. Thanks ladies. Can you hear me okay? I have a rather small voice. Is it good? All right, well thanks for doing this for the ladies of Titusville and thanks for having me. It's super great to be here. So um, a session that I do as part of my marketing and PR business is on creating influence. And then I started translating that over to a program that I do for Dress for Success, where we work with um, women who are at various stages of kind of finding their path and beginning their journey. Some of them are fresh out of college. Some of them are, you know, in the fall or winter of their lives and just realize they need to make a change. Some of them have been incarcerated and have real records and really need to make some sharp changes and have and are looking for a way to overcome some of those challenges. So we talk about the idea of being an influencer. And you know, the newspaper asked me in preparing for this all these questions about work-life balance and you know, women's equality and um, you know, can women have it all? And so I did my best to answer the question. But uh, those topics to me, I mean, can, can I say it? Am I allowed to swear? Can you edit this? <laughs> I, I find that that's all kind of like, you know? <laughs> And I love our Titusville Herald, love them to pieces. But, you know, the one thing that we can control, and there's so much that we can't control, is what's within ourselves. And by no means am I an expert in this field. The fact that I'm here is almost humorous because I am five months pregnant and I will have a newborn and a newly minted teenager in September, so pray for me. <laughs> I will get back to you in 20 years on work-life balance and equality and having it all, I promise or write a book on it, because it sure, it will be hilarious. Um, so, you know, one thing that I've always been uh, proud of is surrounding myself with really great women around me. I call them my posse, and we all need a posse. And I think, you know, seeing women in action is really inspiring. And sometimes that lights us up and gets us thinking about how we can show up in our own lives. And we definitely need more influencers, especially in small rural communities like Titusville. We need them now more than ever. But to be a good influencer, you have to have a couple of things. And creating influence is simply the capacity to have an effect on character, behavior, or development, or on the effect itself. So in thinking about what it takes to be an influencer, I think the first and foremost thing it takes is courage. Courage by far. You have to find a way to move from your comfort zone to your courage zone. And sometimes even at work I sit there and I think, you know, am I doing this because it's easy? Is this, is this the easy way to do it or is this the way that it really should be done to get the results that we want? And that can be really hard. And sometimes we fall into a pattern because maybe we're not pushed enough from our, from our collective circle, our family, our friends, our colleagues and coworkers. So we kind of get into this rut where we feel a little stuck and, and we get stuck in that comfort zone and we're plugging along and we think everything's great. But what happens when we challenge ourselves to move into the courage zone? So for me, 
I have worked with some women who study um, Luro linguistics programming, and it's really just a fancy way of saying cognitive behavior where you replace certain beliefs and, and things with others that are more positive and you reframe those things. So a great way to get courage if you don't have any or need to find some is to simply focus on those limiting beliefs that you have. And limiting beliefs hold us back from being courageous and that can be a real issue. You know, I'm not good enough. Well, I don't have the experience. Well, nobody asked me. You know, we've all been there. I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm just a mom. How many here are just a mom? I mean, that's good enough, right? <laughs> that's good enough. If that doesn't tell you anything about courage and multitasking, I don't know what is, because moms can do everything, almost. So think about limiting beliefs and think about the things that you tell yourself, the stories that you tell yourself about yourself. And think about how those might hold you back and think about the emotions that you have tied to whatever that is. I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I didn't go to college, I don't have a degree, well, my boss really likes this person better, well, I could never do that, I don't have the experience. We learn our belief systems as very little children. And then what happens is, as we get older, we seek out experiences that reinforce those beliefs. So it gets really easy to stay in the comfort zone. And I like being comfortable, don't get me wrong. But today is about women who work, and I say work with a finger snap, because I think you know we're all doing amazing things, and we encourage each other and lift each other up, but we don't need to find value in ourselves because somebody else does. We have to first find value within ourselves and define our own worth. So those limiting beliefs hold us back from doing that. Limiting beliefs shape our decision making because again, they prevent us from seeing opportunities that are before us because we're telling ourselves, no, that's not for me. Anything you say to yourself to justify that limiting belief just needs to stop. It just needs to stop. And so I want you to think about some of those things that you say to yourself, you know, when nobody's looking, the things that nobody knows, the things that nobody hears where you just have certain doubts, maybe you lack confidence in certain areas, it can be at home, it can be at work, it can be if you're going to school, it can be just being a mom, a friend, a sister, a wife, whatever those things are. And then once we establish and kind of recognize those limiting beliefs, we have to define how are we gonna get rid of them? How are we gonna change the script? How are we gonna change the story that we've been telling ourselves? So, we shift our power by shifting our beliefs. And we have to build that power from within. So here are a few steps in how to do that if you're struggling. Step one is write the limiting belief down. Write it down and stare it in the face. Own it. This is how I'm feeling about this particular situation. The second thing is to define the emotion that you have connected to that belief. Maybe you've had some financial struggles in the past. Maybe you haven't achieved the career success you thought you would. You feel stuck. You feel like you're being held back by a boss, a colleague, your personal circumstances. How does that make you feel? And you know, if it's anger, if it's hurt, if it's frustration, what's, what's the level? Is it like really severe? Is it mild? Or is it something that's really persistently showing up for you? Step three, and this is the fun part, is to try on a different belief. We have to reframe what we think and what we say to ourselves. So in reframing that thought, um, I have a great colleague who says, energy flows where the attention goes. And I think we can all believe that. It's like if you don't want to hit the, pot, the pothole in the road, you're looking at the pothole and you're more likely to go close to the pothole. Martha Stewart. She even says, when you're carrying a pan of something that's full to the oven, do not look down at the thing you're carrying. Look at the oven and walk. It works. I've tried it after many attempts of not trying it and having stuff all over me. So in that same vein, you have to say it the way you want it. Instead of saying what you don't have or what you lack or what's not working, say it the way you want it. 
That's important to remember. There's nothing wrong with that. So we're going to practice a little bit on reframing these thoughts. So you have a little piece of paper in front of you. And depending on how big your handwriting is, what you could do is you could fold it. You could fold it vertically or the other way, whatever works for you. But on the one side, I want you to write comfort zone at the top. And then on the other side, I want you to write courage zone. <laughs> and then once you do that, under the comfort zone section, I want you to put a limiting belief, something that you believe to be true about yourself right now. That may, that's likely untrue, but it's that limiting belief of doubt, fear, could be anything. You're afraid to fly, you're afraid to travel, you worry too much. We, we all have something. We all have something. There are no wrong answers. <laughs> you think you got it? If you've thought about the limiting belief, maybe you've written it down, maybe you're still kind of toying with what you might put down. Think about how that limiting belief makes you feel. Think about where it's rooted. Think about that area of your life. What's maybe caused that belief for you. And how does that make you feel? And then put a one, two, or three next to that emotion. One would be you mildly feel it. Two is moderate. And three is it's, it's a very strong emotion that you have about this, this belief that you have, this thing, this hang-up. And this is your own little private thing. And then I guess you probably know what we're going to do on the other side. So under the courage zone, I want you to reframe that thought. How might you say that same thing that was negative, but make it positive and proactive? You know, a lot of women are focused on weight. I really, I really need to lose weight. I'm too fat. I'm too this. Well, how about reframing it so it's more positive and proactive? Today, I'm going to eat one thing that really nourishes my body. Today, I'm going to go for a walk because it's good for me. I have the power to change my body. Instead of focusing on the thing that you are or that you think you are, you have to focus on the outcome you want. So think about the outcome you want and write that under the courage zone because we're fierce. Be courageous. If you could do anything, what, what would that courage look like to you? What would be that outcome or that thing that you really want for yourself? You're good students, thanks. <laughs> thanks for playing along. Does anybody have one they might want to share as an example? It's OK if you don't. We're all friends. All right, go Ashley. In the spirit of courage, yes, yes. Hard on is a lot of times instead of me going in and saying, Hi, I'm Ashley, how are you? I might just wait and see if anybody talks to me in my personal life. 
So one thing that I really worked on as myself is if someone comes up and introduces themselves to me, my thought is never, why are you talking to me? It's, oh, I'm so glad somebody is a, so I want to be more that person, you know, in my personal life and in my professional life that I put myself out there because I know for myself, I've never had anybody introduce themselves to me and me feel in any way like it was a negative thing. It's always been a positive interaction. So kind of reframing that, so why wouldn't someone have that same reaction if I go up to them and introduce myself or sit by them or something. So that, finally in my 40s, I figured that out. So, yeah, I that. so that was something that I tried to do and, and try, have tried to work on in both my personal That's great. That's amazing. Go, Ashley. <laughs> I love that. Does anybody else want to share their little secret? Their little sad, limiting belief, that little bad voice. All right, let's hear it. I love it. Well, I've done the same job for 20 years, and I'm closing in on retirement, mm. actually. But I think I'd say uh, getting old and lacking the energy or the creativity for new ideas mm. um, for the job that, that I do in problem solving or, I'm the director of the United Way, so mm -hmm. fundraising, you know, the, the whole deal. So that's, you know, am I doing the best job I can do because I feel like I'm worn out, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so on the other side, I change it to, I need to use the experiences I've gained to seek out new ways to, to solve the problem and come up with new ideas. That's a great one. That's a great one. So I get it. What's, no, I love it. Gold star, gold star. I love it. I love it. Is there anything else that anybody wants to share? Share with courage? All right, no more secret sharing? Okay. Those are two very good examples. I can tell you that, um, oddly, or maybe not oddly, I actually am terrified to be up here speaking in front of you. I, uh, much like Ashley, I'm kind of a closet introvert and people sometimes find that hard to believe, but I have tried very hard to act like an extrovert because I feel like I don't want people to be called attention to my shyness and my awkwardness. So I figure if I act like I'm not shy, people won't talk about it and be like, oh, she's shy. I don't know if that's working or not, but this is terrifying for me. And I had, when Emily called me, I said, girlfriend, say yes, let's do it. So here I am, and you're all lovely. Thank you for allowing me to do this. So, oh, thank you, thank you. So those are two great examples. But the other thing that we need besides courage to be influencers and to shift our power is really a commitment to be courageous, which that's really the hard part. There's things we know we should do. There's things we know that are better for us. Um, you know, and we know a lot of times that those little things that get stuck in our head that we say over and over to ourselves, we know that a lot of that has to change, but it's like anything. It's hard and it takes time. And you've been building up this habitual thing in your head for years, decades, sometimes a lifetime. It's not gonna go away overnight. So commitment is really key. And you know, a big part of being an, influence, an influencer is that commitment piece is about not giving up. There's a lot of issues going on locally, across the state, across the nation, and it's going to take some real gutsy gals, I think, to get a lot of this stuff figured out. And so back to my point about rural communities especially, we need women like you more than ever to show up and to have that commitment, to not give up when people say no or the my favorite, well, we tried that once. It's like, great, in 1982, let me tell you, a lot's changed. It can be very frustrating to constantly be put up against obstacles, things that stumble us, things that no thank you, no thank you, no thank you. But I, I have this belief, too, that you don't really need an invitation to show up. And sometimes we wait for the invitation instead of just kind of saying, oh, hey, guys, I'm here. <laughs> what can I do? Oh, is this a meeting? Oh, great, I'm just going to sit in. And I've actually had to do that over the course of my career, which I mean, is, I would say is pretty still young. I'm only 38. But even in my 20s, being a young person, it was so hard to get people to accept young people to the table because they thought, oh, well, you know, they're just a screw off kid. Well, they're just at college. What do they know? They haven't done anything. 
And, and that's another great shift besides women is seeing more young people at the table, more young people involved in the processes of making your community great. So that commitment piece is really key. So along with commitment, I want to do one last little exercise. And this is probably one of my favorite exercises. It's very simple and it's very easy. But I've done this with about 20 different Dress for Success classes. And I really get some amazing feedback from some of the ladies that have done it. Um, they write me on social media or they'll send me a picture of themselves. But I want you, in the spirit of thinking courageously and moving from your comfort zone to your courage zone, you have a blank name tag. So this is the part where we commit to shifting our beliefs. Shifting our beliefs from a negative belief about ourselves to a positive one. And if you want, you can put I am dot 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 across the top instead of hello my name is. And then I want you to write three adjectives. And I'm looking for some powerful adjectives that describe the woman you want to be. Not the woman you are, not the woman you were, but in your day-to-day -day life, how do you want to show up? How do you want people to think about you? And how are you going to start to think about yourself? And then the plot will thicken. <laughs> Really own it. Don't, don't be scared. Own it. Sure, if you want. Huh? Sure. Do it. It's for everybody. Powerful words. Come big, come big. Thank you. Does anybody have three that they want to share? I'm looking for three good adjectives. <laughs> it's the woman you want to be. It's fine. That's great. Anybody want to share theirs? Or a word? Maybe you only have one so far? Patient. That's important. Ooh, accomplished. It's a good one. Accomplished. Accomplished. I'm done. <laughs> All right. How about this table? Somebody tell me how to work. Just a word.
All right, ladies, I have some good ones. Patient actually showed up twice. Patient was the most common word that I heard. Interesting, I know, it's a lost cause. There's not even alcohol. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> All right, so we have our three words. We have our three words, and if you don't have three, it's okay, think about it. But I want you to take these with you, and I don't want you to lose them, I don't want you to forget about them. But again, in the spirit of being courageous, I dare you, I want you, <laughs> to wear these all day tomorrow. And I, I, will tell, I will tell you why. I will tell you why. <laughs> I told you the plot thickens. So, by wearing these, <laughs> you, it's almost done, I swear. <laughs> It's okay, hold on. So ladies, we're gonna wear these all day tomorrow. And what's gonna happen when you wear them? <laughs> yeah, come on. We're gonna wear these all day tomorrow. And I want you to note, to document, Share on Facebook, message me, Emily Fetchko, whatever you wanna do, I would love to hear just what happened when you wear these. And I will tell you for me, I also wear them when I give them to the ladies that I work with at Dress for Success. And a lot of them have had really humble and rough lives. And when I hear their stories, it's very inspiring to me. And I'm kind of in the trenches with them during this little program. So we share our stories, but this is about changing your limiting belief. So you've really got to own it and you've got to say it the way you want it. So this name tag is about saying it the way you want it and making sure that your energy flows where the attention goes. And you'll get people that say, oh, what is that? What does that mean? And they'll come up to you and they'll squint and they'll read out loud your words. That's very empowerful. That's empowering and, and it forces that side of you, because often they will say, you are all those things. And isn't it nice to hear that we're something that we didn't think we were, or maybe weren't sure about? So at some point you will forget that you have it on, and that's a good thing. But tomorrow when you wake up, I want you to slap these on with pride, and I want you to wear them throughout the day. Whole day, wherever you go, grocery store, library, drop the kids off, PTA meeting, wherever it is, I want you to wear them. And I will wear mine as well. And I want you to think about this. And then what I often do is when I'm done with the name tag for the day, I put it in the very center of my steering wheel. And I keep it there for as long as I can until it gets really tattered and worn. But putting it on your steering wheel is a really great reminder of all those things that you are. Because you already have all these things inside of you, whether you realize it or not. Everything you need, is already there. So think about these three things and think about reframing your thoughts. So that's pretty much it. But I just want to remind you to not be afraid to show up in your lives. And I encourage you to live courageously and to move into your courage zone and support each other to do that. Thank you very much, guys. Lost your, your oh no! Okay, so hold on to that. And wait, wait, wait. We have just a little gift to thank you, Emily, for being oh here tonight. Gosh. Come to the chamber, thank everyone. You guys. Well, thank you for Hello. being yes. here. <laughs> and so tomorrow at community council lunch, I will see several of you. So I'm going to report back to Emily if you guys aren't wearing your name tags tomorrow. She will know. But so a lot of us will see each other tomorrow throughout the day. So we'll all have to have our name tags on and yes, do a little accountability. And, Maybe a little, a little Facebook uh, selfie sharing of our name tags tomorrow. So that would be fun. Everyone can post to the Chamber website and we'll, uh, we'll share those. But with that, that is the conclusion of our program. So I want to thank you all for being here tonight. And everybody be, be careful getting back home this evening. And thank you again so much for being here.